Today we're going to learn how to make a very simple mustache for your puppet. Now the techniques to drape the mustache is very similar to the techniques that you use to make the hair for a puppet in general. And if you want to see how to do that, you can click on this video right here, which is a really in-depth view on how to cut and style the hair for your puppet. But with doing something as small and short as a mustache, there are some fun little quick little tips that you can do to make it go a lot faster for the draping process. You could use a piece of fabric or felt for the draping. I've even seen people use paper towels. My favorite thing for draping a quick mustache is painter's tape. The reason why I like the painter's tape better is because you don't have to use an extra adhesive to attach it to the paper that you're gonna make your pattern out of. If you were using paper towel or paper, you'd have to use a glue like a spray adhesive to attach it to your pattern paper. Or if you used fabric, you'd have to use a tracing wheel and transfer it or just trace it. But with a painter's tape, you can draw directly on it and then stick the tape directly to your paper and then just cut it out. So it's a handy little tip. And the painter's tape is better than the masking tape because it won't pull too hard on the fibers and it comes off really easily. Watch how quick we can do it. So I'll bring you right over here to our dentist in residence. Uh, we're gonna give him a quick little mustache today. I am gonna stitch it on, but I will just take it off later because I don't actually want this character to have it. This is for demonstration purposes only. So here's the masking tape and all I'm gonna do is rip off a piece about as long as I want. I'm gonna make it a little bit longer because I'm just gonna draw it on anyway. And put it here, but now I want it to go up. I want it to go up around the nose, so I'm just gonna roughly rip out a little piece that can hook around the nose so we can kind of get up to those edges a little higher. So let's see, just like that. Oh yeah, that's nice. I'm gonna curl that into his mouth. So now I'm gonna decide what kind of mustache I want this guy to have. So now just using a Sharpie, I'm gonna draw directly onto the tape the shape of the mustache that I want. And for this guy, I'm gonna give him, uh, I'm gonna do kind of a plain mustache, I think. You can always style it by curling and doing things like that too. But I'm just gonna draw it on just like this. Try to make it as symmetrical as possible. Now, uh, for the ends, you don't want it to come to a point. Even if you want the actual mustache to come to a point, you wanna do a little flat end because you can then roll the edges as you're stitching it to make it uh, really seamless and look really nice. Okay, I'm gonna draw down across the lip here, a little further than I need. And there we have it. Now I'm gonna take this off and stick it to a piece of paper. Okay, so for the mustache, here is what I drew, okay? So I'm just gonna stick that down just like that, and then I'm gonna to start to cut it out. I'm gonna cut it out a little rough at first so they can make sure it's symmetrical though. So watch, I'll cut right here, and I'll actually just cut straight here at first just to kind of bring it down a little bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna fold it in half right in the middle of where that is. So to show you a little bit more clearly, I'm gonna fold it right in the center of this shape I made to have it hook around the nose. Because I know that's the center, even if one of these sides is a little bit too long. So I'll fold it right on that line. And I like, hmm. I think I like this side of the mustache a little better. So I'll cut that out, and I'll have a nice symmetrical pattern with one step. And now I have a real nice little mustache pattern that is perfectly symmetrical and will fit this puppet just right. Now let's trace it out on the fabric. Now you wanna decide which way you want the fabric to go. I like to have the fur going down uh, on the lip, so I'm gonna put it just like this and make sure that I orient my mustache this way so that the fur will be going down. Get a little bit closer over here. Now one little tip when you're using fur, this is the salvage edge, and you can see, at least with this, this is the Mongolian fur, that this edge is kinda of this, has this weird web, like melted look on the end. I always try not to use the raw salvage edge 
whenever I'm using uh, pretty much any type of fur. As long as you're an inch away from the edge, that should be just fine. So I'll trace this out. It might be a little hard to see on the fabric since it's such a dark fabric, but I'm just tracing directly around it just like this. And I'll carefully cut it out. Now I cut a little bit to the outside of the line because the actual marker line is what I want to roll in as I'm stitching it on. So I'm just using the Persona blade to carefully cut the fur from the back. Anytime you're cutting fur, you always want to use a razor blade from the back. That keeps you from cutting all these little furs. Because if I was just to cut the, the fur with scissors like this, you know, you, you can get the piece off. But watch what happens. All this fur just falls off. You cut the nap off with it, okay? Which is not something you normally want to do anytime you're cutting fur. So by using a razor blade in the back, you're just cutting the netting like that, and then there won't be any let loose fur that falls down. Just like that. So there's the mustache cut out from the back. And that's how it looks from the front. Now for the final puppet, I'm not gonna leave the fur this long. I'm actually gonna trim it, but I don't like to do any trimming until after this is all attached. So let's stitch it on. Okay, so let me just pin this on at first just to see how it looks. And oh, that's gonna look, that's actually gonna look pretty funny. I think maybe I might keep it. We'll see. Let's pin that on. Oh yeah, when that's trimmed up, I think that's gonna look that's gonna look really nice. Now I actually like to start the stitching close to the nose because it's kind of a nice easy place to kind of tuck a thread in if you have to. Another quick note is I did a whole video on sewing techniques for puppets, and you can find that by clicking right here. It goes really into depth on the best types of stitches to use on puppets and when to use them. So definitely check that out. So I'm gonna start right here in this corner. So the stitch I am going to use for attaching this is a slip stitch. That's the only way you can really roll the seam completely uh, when you're stitching from something from the outside. So I'm tucking it in just like this. Now one more little tip I'm going to say is uh, you, can, you can prep your thread however you want but I like to prep my thread the way the tailor does. So a lot of people, the way they first learned uh, sewing is they double up the thread and actually have two lines of thread going through the whole thing. But the way a tailor does it is they only have one string going through. So you can see this other end is short and just pulls through every time. So that way you can get it more evenly and a more precise um, stitch line. But a lot of people wonder, is it half as strong now? And it's not really the case. That's not the way it works uh, with this type of sewing. Having double the thread doesn't necessarily make it twice as strong. The strength of the sewing is not as much based on the thread as it is based on how well you can sew. So the more you practice, the better it will be. That being said though, you also shouldn't use like the chintziest thread you can find. Just buy something decent. As long as it's something that was a couple bucks and it's, it's not really, really old from, from a garage sale or something, it'll hold up just fine. Now I'm kind of just gently rolling it as I go. It's going to kind of naturally want to roll as long as you're stitching right on the edge. But, um... Sometimes you can give it a little bit of encouragement with your fingers. You never want to pull tight when you're sewing either. A little stitching term is um, when, when they reference uh, a tight stitch, that doesn't mean pulling tight. That just means the stitches are really close together. A loose stitch is the opposite. It doesn't mean the thread is really loose, it just means you have a really wide stitch line. Now for stitching on something like this, that's just for aesthetic, it doesn't have to actually support any real weight of anything. I think I'd say I do about a medium, uh, uh, a medium tightness. Probably a little less than a quarter of an inch. 
stitching all the way around. So I got all the way to this end, now I'm going to flip the puppet upside down, do the bottom edge underneath, and then wrap around back to the tip of the nose. I'll trim that, and then it looks like he's ready to go. All right, now just do some of the grooming. I like to comb it out first. Now, if you really wanted to, you could just stop here if that's the style of mustache that you want. And uh, especially, you know, you you can put the, the stuff in the style it. I like to use the Elmer's glue, but um, sometimes you might want it to be like this. This is a, a type of texture that the puppet can interact with more. It can like twirl it around its fingers if it needs to, or if you need it to be, uh, you know, messy for a certain look for a shot. Uh, you have a lot of options with that. And you get some more um, sympathetic movement from it as well, if you, again, if, if you need that. But, uh, but I like to comb it out before giving it a trim. And also, Always start off uh, leaving it as long as you can because you can always trim more away, but you can't really put any back, not without kind of starting over again. Another thing you can do too is kind of style it like this. If you like a kind of a, um, a Salvador Dali kind of look, before you go crazy cutting all the fur, you can style it like this. And even when it's like this, you can use the Elmer's glue to, to style it just like that. But another little trick I do is if, if I'm gonna use the Elmer's glue and wanna do this, is using a pin to kind of hold it in place in air just like this. So I can kind of weave it around while it's drying and leave it just like that. So you can kind of see, I'll, I'll zoom in on that. So you can see there that that's kind of floating in space because of it being wrapped around those pins. If you really wanna go crazy, you can actually wrap uh, the fur around wire, and that way you can pose the entire thing however you want. If you need to change it for different scenes or something like that, that's something maybe we can do in another video. Let me know down below if that's something you wanna see in the future. But anyway, let's trim it down. For a mustache, I usually like to just start off just kind of trimming it straight across. Now be careful that you don't cut through anything uh, that you really need. I don't want to cut this guy's teeth or his fleece on accident, so I'm being careful. Watch where you're cutting. And look, already that looks pretty funny. I think that looks nice. I think that's kind of the style that I want, but with a straight cut across like I just did, now the bottom part of the, the hair is really, really short, and up here, it's really, really long. So I'm gonna even it out a little bit by kind of grooming it forward like this, and then just gently trimming it like this. That'll give it a little bit more of a realistic mustache look. Look at that, oh my gosh, that looks so funny. I actually think this suits him pretty well. So right now he's looking like that. Now let's do a little bit of styling. Okay, so I've got a little dish of water here that I'm gonna mix some Elmer's glue in right now. Now I have this really big gallon jug here, but even if you just have a little bottle, that'll be totally fine. Also, this is the regular Elmer's glue. You can use the school glue, but um, you'd wanna probably cut it with a little bit less water because that's pretty much all school glue is, is diluted regular Elmer's glue, I believe. So just like that, that's way more than enough than I need for a small mustache like this, but whatever. So let's mix it up just a little bit. Now again, for something as small as this mustache, I'm just gonna apply uh, with one finger, okay? Just like this, and slowly, let me turn you over. Slowly, just kind of work it in. Now, you don't want to do it just on the surface of the fur. You really kind of want to work it in. At least that's what I've always done, and I've 
well, very happy with the results that I've had. That'll keep it from getting like uh, bent if you ever um, have the puppet bonk into something. It'll just uh, minimize chances. It'll keep the mustache from getting deformed during performances. So I can see I'm really kind of pinching it in there, really massaging it in. Now another nice thing about the Elmer's glue, which I talk a lot about this in the hair video that I mentioned earlier, is even though you're putting it in there, you can kind of still rework it in the future. Since the Elmer's glue is water-based, nothing is like completely permanent. You, I don't think you'll be able to get the fur back to its original texture ever, but again, you can always kind of restyle it or add more or kind of take some out by getting it wet. And that is just looking too funny. I'll comb out that mustache a little bit more. And that's looking even better than I hoped, actually. I'll give it a final little trim. And that looks pretty funny, I think. That looks great. Really turned out nice matches his hair, just perfect. And I think that is it. Please let me know what else you want to see. I am reading all the comments. I'm making a list of all the different videos that people are requesting, and they'll all come out eventually. Some of the next ones I want to do are different types of muzzles for a puppet, as well as the video on how to make a sack puppet, and many, many more that you've all requested. I have a whole list and it's growing. Speaking of lists, Santa wants to put your name on his list. Not just any Santa, but the Santa from Merry Christmas Krampus. Our friends over at Swazzle Puppet Studio have been working on this really, really cool book. Their team wrote and created this wonderful Christmas story, and they need your help in order to make this book become a reality. One thing that's really cool about the way they're making this book is they're not doing regular illustrations. They actually made little stop animation style puppets of each character, and they repose them for each photo of the book. And the artwork is just beautiful. Everything in that image is completely made by hand. From the puppets to the background and the sceneries, it really looks spectacular. Please consider supporting their project. For a donation as small as $30, you actually get a copy of the final book. And there's many other really cool perks inside there, including having your name somewhere in the book, and even them creating a puppet caricature of you as an elf to be in the book itself. So it's a really great opportunity to become part of this really cool project. But if you're strapped for cash now, there's other ways you can help. By sharing this video or the link down below to their page, it's gonna help so much for them to be able to bring this project to life. Anyway, that's it for now. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you next time.